We turn now to the chairman of the Republican National Committee, Reince Priebus. He's in Racine, Wisconsin this morning. Mr. Chairman, Paul Manafort says that Donald Trump wants to participate in the debates, but it doesn't sound like a full-blown commitment. Is there anything unfair about the way the debates are set up now at this moment? Well, uh, we're going to be working with the commission, John, uh, in what they're putting together. Certainly, we're not going to agree with anything that our nominee doesn't agree with, and it would be incumbent upon them to communicate with us and others about what they have in mind. But we're not going to be having debates on Saturday and Sunday nights, I don't believe. Uh, it's up to the nominee uh, both, of both parties to make that decision, but certainly the RNC is going to be involved in supporting our nominee and his position on this. My personal view is, is that we need to maximize the audience, and that's going to be either a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Thursday night, and um, that's where we stand on the issue. These debates, uh, the dates have been set for a long time. The independent commission that sets them set them a long time ago. Why did we? Are we just now hearing about this from the RNC? Well, they don't. They didn't communicate to us, so <clears throat> no one from the commission's called me. I know that Annenberg did a study and pointed out a lot of flaws with this commission and. Um, it's been a hot topic, I think, in our party for a long time, and whether or not the RNC and the DNC should take over these debates is a topic that has been discussed in the past. I'm fine with working with the commission as long as they're willing to work with us, but I, I'm not, I've not talked to them at all. So, Mr. Chairman, are you saying you didn't know that the debates were set for, uh, for these debates? The, the announcement on the debates was quite some time ago, on the date. They can set whatever dates they want, but it's going to, I mean, I don't really care when they set their debates, when they communicate with the nominees and they have a contract put together and we choose the moderators and we choose the networks that are going to be in charge of these debates, that to me is the time when all of this gets set. I mean, if they have target dates, that's fine, but they haven't communicated any of those things with uh, the people that actually have to work with the nominees and the networks and everyone else to put actually these things together. I see. And so there's one on a Sunday and one on a Monday night. You think that there's a problem with that because it just the audience will be too small because of the competition with football. Well, I think it's I, I don't understand why we would have Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump debating each other, which is of interest to the entire country. I mean, let's face it. This is a this is a, an election like none we've ever seen. There is a massive national interest. We just saw that in both national conventions and breaking records, why would we present the next president of the United States, one of the two of these folks, on a Sunday night or a Monday night? Why wouldn't we want to maximize the audience and the viewership so that people can feel free to watch? I, I, I don't understand why they would do that. Do you agree with the nominee that it's a rigged system, the, the debates? No, I listen, I don't know about whether the commission's rigged. I just think there's a lot of flaws with, these, with this commission. They, they're working hard. I'm not taking anything away from them. It's not easy. I know that. I've been through thick and thin with these debates, as everyone understands. But, but there's no reason why there wouldn't be a give and take. And, I, and by the way, I think there will be a give and take. And what we're saying is, you know, having a debate on a Sunday night or a Monday night is not the ideal time, and right. we should revisit it. Let me ask you about something else Mr. Trump said recently. He said he wouldn't meet with the conservative donors, the Koch brothers, because that would make him a quote-unquote puppet. But uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan's meeting with them, Governor Scott Walker, Wisconsin's meeting with them, and Mike Pence has a strong relationship with the Koch brothers. So are they all puppets? Well, look, I, I, don't, I, I, I didn't hear that quote. I'm not questioning your, your comments. But look, I've had a good relationship with Charles and David. Um, I've had a good relationship with Americans for Prosperity. I've had a good relationship with many of the donors that help them. I think we're a big family, and I think that some of these bruises take time to heal. I think in the end, we actually are going to be uh, together at the table, uh, working together once we get through uh, this month and next month. I, I think in the end, we're all going to come together, and I think some of these things are just a lot of bruises that take time to heal. On the broader question, though, Mr. Trump at almost every rally talks about those who receive money from special interests as being puppets of the donors. He's talked about himself playing that role as the puppet master when he's given money. A lot of Republicans receive money, as, of course, Democrats do. Hillary Clinton receives a lot of it. But are Republicans uh, puppets because they receive money from special interests? 
I don't think anyone's a puppet, but I think what Donald Trump is saying, and rightfully so, is that he's a unique candidate who hasn't had to rely on a lot of these special interests money. I'm not saying spe all special interests are bad interests, and I don't think people that have to take money are necessarily bad, but I do think that when a person like Hillary Clinton lines her pockets with all of the groups that she then turns around and bashes, it's a, it's a, there's an air of hypocrisy. I don't have a problem with, with banks. I don't have a problem with Wall Street. But the problem I have is with a hypocrite who, on one hand, takes gobs of money from the places that she then turns around and claims that she's working against. It's all just the big fraud. And it was a fraud that the DNC tipped the scales in her favor. It's a fraud that she pivots and talks about mm -hmm. Russia when she herself is the reason why uh, these emails that, she's t that, that she put at risk are in the conversation that we're having today. And it's a fraud that she talks about special interests on one hand and then turns around and claims that she's working against it. Look, the, 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 the whole Clinton campaign is a fantasy land. You saw that last week. Everything is great. It's all vanilla ice cream and cotton candy. Nothing to see. No talk of ISIS. Everything's on the right track. Look, she has put us on a glide path which has created a situation that Americans are hurting in this country. We don't have an answer to ISIS uh, across the ocean. And Donald Trump is talking about how we're going to get ourselves on track. And that's where we're at today. All right, Mr. Chairman, thanks so much for being with us. And we'll be back in one minute. Thank you, John.